real hot girl shit. And if the beat live, you know Lil Juke made it. Body, yaddy, 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 Welcome back to another episode of Pretty Plus Size and Powerful Podcast. We are on episode 69, I believe. Yes, you are. I think. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure that you tune in every Wednesday. And if you want to catch us live like you are now, tune in on Saturdays. And if you are returning, if you are one of the family members, what's up? Welcome back. In case you don't know the voice, it's an, it. What the fuck am I saying? In case you don't know the voice, it's me, Aziza, aka Zebo, aka the Human Universe, aka your favorite fat girl. And I got my bestie with me across the country. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey y'all, hey it's your girl Ruthia, aka the spoiled one, aka the curve queen, aka the real one, aka the unbothered one. All right, all right, all right. And uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, what is the quote for this week? I actually have two quotes because I couldn't decide. Um, so the first quote is, there will always be someone who doesn't see your worth. Don't let that someone be you. And the second quote is, until you change your thinking, you will recycle your experiences. Mm. That's good. That's good. Can you read them again? There will always be someone who doesn't see your worth. Don't let that someone be you. Come the fuck on. Until you change your thinking, you will recycle your experiences. Shit. That's a motherfucking word. Both of them shits is a word. Is a word. Is a word. Is a word. So, before we move on, how was your week? Um, I don't know. My week has been, um, it's been wavy, I guess. It's been up, down, side to side. I don't know. It's just been, it's just been days passing. Hey, uh, I've been sleeping a lot. Um, I'm reverting back to my 2020 ways. Where when shit is not going right, I just kind of try and sleep the day away. And that's definitely not going to help <clears throat> my current situation. Um, I definitely need to re-strategize, reform myself, renew, restore. Otherwise, I'm going to have to like go be a fat stripper. Um, and I really don't want to do that. I mean, it's you not just a stripper. You don't have to be a fat one. But I gotta. That's gonna be my marketing tool. That's gonna be my um uh, my brand, the fat stripper. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, since we're talking about our weeks, what's your vibe for the week? Um. So my vibe is <laughs> filters. Um. I've been filtering a lot of people, a lot of things um, this week, and I'm excited about it because whenever something doesn't feel right, I just filter it. I filter them. I filter the people in my life. I filter the um, the energy that I'm surrounded with. If somebody doing some stupid on social media, I either delete the page or I just delete them, period. Um, so... And at this point, I'm just feeling like I don't owe anybody an explanation as to why I'm filtering them. Just know that you on time out, whether it's temporary or permanent. I'm just filtering. Okay. okay. Um, my vibe this week. Um, I did um some spiritual readings for myself, and um, just to kind of see, you know, what kind of year. I, I should be expecting to have and what um, what I need to be doing for myself 
Um, and often, well, anytime I do a reading, I like to get insight from my dad. So I talk to him, which that's few and far between. So he had a lot to say. And um, one of the random things he was talking about was how um, how men and women relate to each other. And I think it kind of, t- well, it ties into what I want to talk about today, but his thing was um, men carry the word. Um, and I don't think he was talking about like the word of God or anything like that. He was just saying like when it comes to talking, that's where usually men ha- <clears throat> have um, the upper hand. He said a lot of men can, um, well, he was saying a lot of men oftentimes talk women into doing any and everything that they want them to do. Um, he referred to pimps and preachers and poets and all of this different type of stuff. Um, but then he said that women hold the power. Um, we we are the ones that get shit done. We're the ones that um, create these pedestals or platforms that the men can stand on. Um, his example was um, how many churches are headed by men. And not that I know specifically, but he was saying the majority of them are headed by men. He said, but how many churches would exist if black women didn't go to church? That's a fact. And shit, none of them. None of them would no black churches would exist if black women didn't go to church. So um, that was his example of word versus power. And I thought that was super dope. And it made me realize like that's that's the that's a balance right there like they always say behind every strong man is a strong woman um let's upgrade that to 2021 and say beside every strong man is a strong woman um shit we nine times out of ten well not even nine times out of ten no more (laughs) in our in a traditional sense men are the breadwinners but women run the households we gonna decide what the decor gonna be like we gonna decide what the dinner gonna be like we gonna decide how um children are are gonna be um disciplined and mm-hmm. all this other stuff so yeah we are we are the wheel we are we are the power source yeah that's my what exactly is spiritual read you said what what exactly is a spiritual read? Um, well, um, I don't have tarot cards, but it's similar to that. It's just a different type of card. Um, and then those cards kind of correlate to specific um, spiritual um, pockets, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, so my spiritual reading for this year really said that I need to get control of my... Um, my emotional um responses to things and i need to remain at peace which has kind of is that's really been the story of my entire life like if i need to watch and control how i respond to things because i'm always in control with how i respond i'm not necessarily in control of the situation um but it was literally saying like nigga if you don't get your emotions in control nothing that you are going to try to do is going to um work um so yeah that was pretty much it interesting um yeah it also told me to um be patient don't rush into situations and i already like i i could feel i can and i could understand where that made sense and why that made sense so yeah i'm just trying to pull it back um oh so i went and did yoga last week with uh or no our last week's guest i did yoga with her on wednesday she invited me to um her class first of all she is phenomenal like she was killing that shit. Um, and so it kind of pushed me to, you know what I'm saying, go through with the entire thing. Like, we did yoga for a whole hour. Like, I'm so out of shape. But I felt so much stronger 
after it. Um, so I'm definitely going to be going back. Um, but <clears throat> after doing the spiritual reading and then um, taking a yoga class with her, she talked about like what our intention for the uh, for the practice was. Um, and throughout the class, she would remind us to like draw our attention, draw our attention back to our intention. Um, and so my intention for the class was attraction, attraction, uh, attracting the resources I need, attracting the people I need, just attracting everything I need to make sure that I can move forward and that I can live up to my own definition of what I feel like is successful so that I can just live. <sighs> so I can just live, period. So yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah I forgot what I was about to say I was about to say something else oh this is another thing this ain't this ain't my vibe but now I'm rambling <sighs> I need to I'm cool with meditation but I really need to learn how to pray um or I need like a prayer partner or something because the tests and trials that I'm going through right now in these last, in just a week, in just one week where I thought it was going to be smooth sailing down here in Georgia. Child, listen. It's just, I got to build up some type of spiritual fortitude. I have to build up my relationship with God. So, I definitely need to find somebody who is just willing to pray with me every day. Um, like, cause I need to be able to cry out. Like with meditation, I can go within and I can work on myself, but I need to be able to cry out. Like I need to be able to release, you know what I'm saying? The shit that's going on. Um, I need to be able to get the fuck out the bed. Like literally I slept till the last minute you know what I'm saying? Until I could just get up and, you know what I'm saying? Freshen up and brush my teeth and throw something on and just get out in the car. Like, and I've been like, ugh. it's hard because being a caretaker, being a caretaker for my mom is harder than I thought which I'm still up for the challenge, but to see up close and personal, the changes from like, this was the most independent woman I had ever known in my life. to now I have to make sure that she eat on a regular basis because she'll get so busy that she'll forget. Like that shit is like a fucking boulder. Like it's trying to carry, it's like trying to carry the world on your shoulders. It's just reverse motherhood. Yeah. That shit is not a motherfucking easy ass task. Like I was not prepared for this shit at all. Um, so a lot of the times I spend like I spend a lot of time in the house just because it's like I can't leave her. I can't leave her. What if she leave out and lock herself out? It's it's, it's not eat like it take me, it take me seven minutes just to get to the main road you know what i'm saying like anything that i need to go to like the closest gas station is 15 minutes away so the grocery store like i can't i can't leave and go nowhere too long or too far because if in an if in an emergency i need to get back to her like shit that's an emergency that she got to deal with by herself for 30 minutes so yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate that. But you know, I'm gonna call Jamila Carney. I must say, prayer and, and meditation goes hand in hand. So it's really just a conversation with yourself, um, and a conversation with whoever it is that you choose to identify God as. So. I don't think is something that you need to like have a partner for. I mean, people need say they need workout partners, but if if you're gonna work hard, you're gonna work hard. And 
I think the biggest thing is to ask for increased faith and as well as ask to be prepared for the things that you're praying for. I'm on that. I'm on that. Because. Yeah, I don't like to pray out loud, but it seems that when I do, like in the group settings with our friendships, that's when y'all think that I'm doing the most. And they be like, yeah, I, I, I didn't hear myself. So <laughs> I literally shrank in those moments. So I was able to, you know, allow him to speak for me. Yeah, I need one of them. I need, I need one of them. I need a good... I need a good cry, like Shut up. just so I can get that shit out and be like, all right, motherfucker, let me pop my pop my collar, you know what I'm saying? Put my big girl panties on and fucking get out here and conquer this shit with my mama in the car. <laughs> like, come on, you gotta me? go. I mean, we talked about relationships a while ago and how you want to be a a little bit a part of everything. She is your relationship at this point. Period. So she needs to be a little bit or a lot of bit a part of everything. Being a mother, we have to take our children everywhere. So Tom, don't don't listen to Juan and zoom in on me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, I can live uh, you ready to move on or no? Sure. What? Okay. Um. So, what I wanted to talk about today, um, is this weird ass back and forth that men and women have over social media and we've been having it for a while now and I just I don't understand why instead of um it just seemed like we're always on the attack um toward each other um it seemed like instead of having conversations we always are throwing subliminals at each mm-hmm. other. And it's like, we want to come together. We want to be able to form healthy, you know what I'm saying? Romantic relationships. Excuse me, I burnt like a motherfucker. But the communication is like, the communication is like one way, one going this way and the other one going this way. And we kind of just, just keep missing each other. Like, um, I can't look it up, but I sent some of the some of just some of the stuff that um that I've seen and that was just today um that kind of outlined or that kind of highlighted what I'm talking about. Um and I do want to like I understand there's a thing, you know what I'm saying? There's healthy debate, you know what I'm saying? When you don't agree with some shit, you you know what I'm saying, you talk back and forth about it. But to me, it's not seeming like healthy debate. It's seeming like finger pointing. Like mm-hmm. I'm a point, like, you know what I'm saying? I want to point my finger at you until you just submit to what I want you to do. Right. And that's like on both ends. You get what I'm saying? It's like we not understanding that we're saying the same thing, just in different ways. It's like, I want to be the number one versus we neck and neck. Right. Right. And um and, and you know, like you said, we send it in different ways, but we ain't even trying to hear each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying to you, like these are the things that I need. Like I do want to try something out with you, or you know what I'm saying, like I'm trying to get on the same accord. But because you might say it a little different, your word, the words you use might be a little bit different or you really coming at it from the opposite perspective. Like I'm always going to come at something from a womanly, a feminine perspective because that's who I am. That's what I identify as. You know what I'm saying? Like a guy, on the other hand, might look at the exact same fucking situation 
and he got a whole different perspective. And right. instead That's of us, I'm not gonna put on my socks before I put on my pants. Just put the shit on. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like we trying to. It's, it's like we trying to all look at the same piece of art and trying to convince each other of what that piece of art means to the other person. Like what what it means to me ain't gotta be what it means to you but at the end of the day this is still the big picture you know what I'm saying what you contribute to it and what I contribute to it should be different but at the end of the day it's still the big picture um and I wish we had a a, like I really wish we had the male perspective because I want to know like what it is you know what I'm saying like I want to kind of get to Maybe even if we don't get to the bottom, like I want to get to the halfway point of I what mean, the hell is, is going on. Say it again. We well, got a male here. He's just ancient. First and foremost, go. Uh, I was getting ready to say if you have a particular male, we can actually send the guest invite to, and they can join us on this conversation, so they don't have to be here. Um, that is always an option. Who you want? Who you who you thinking? Definitely not one. No, you know who I was. You know who. Was, what about Rodney? I wonder what he doing. Wingman Rod. I don't have no access to him. Is he? Is Are you he friends with him on Facebook, Tom? What's his name? Rodney yeah. Lafleur. It should be Rod Lafleur. Ooh. Big Rob, wingman. Oh, man. Big Rob. Not Rob, Rod, Rodney. Wingman, the wingman. Let me see if I'm friends with him. Just because I like his perspective on stuff. Like, he grew up with, he grew up in a, a family, or in a two-parent household and shit like that. And he has to be hard. But, in the meantime, um, one of the um one of the pictures that I had sent to the um the podcast uh thread um was this um perspective or it was it's like that meme where they kind of it's like oh we say something say something and then walk away and walk away or whatever um and it was this dude who uh, or no it was a girl was I didn't pregnant of that huh I didn't get any of that. I just sent it this morning. Like, right before we started. Um, so, the girl's supposed to be pregnant. The dude, like, oh my god, I'm gonna be a dad. Um, and then the girl goes and get an abortion. And the dude is sad. Like, please don't do this, right? Then the other side of that was the girl is pregnant and she happy. The dude is like, I'm not ready to be a dad. Did I say the girl was not ready to be a dad? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> the girl is not ready to be a mom. <laughs> so she goes and get an abortion. So when the guy says he's not ready to be a dad, and she decides, okay, well, I'm keeping the baby anyways, and he leaves, Um, the whole thing was like, well, what's the difference? Tone said he posted it. Huh? Tone said he posted that. Yeah, it's on my page. And what are your thoughts on that, first of all? So the mom is not ready to be a mom. She goes and have an abortion and break the dad heart. The dad is not ready to be a dad. He leaves and break the mom heart. What's the difference? Um, As a mother, as someone that has to physically carry a child, um, I feel like neither one is thinking about the other's person, the other person's mindset or the ability to be a part. But as a female, when we decide that we're not ready and we choose to terminate a pregnancy or opt for abortion or adoption, um, we're thinking about the fact that 
what's been around us, what we've been quote unquote traumatized to see that we don't have the options of the male figure being there. So at the end of the day, this is my body. This is my child ultimately. And I'm the one that has to deal with everything. If you decide to lead down the road. Um, but as far as a male, whether you decide to be there or not, I'm, I still have to choose if I want to carry this human being. So if you decide that you want to leave, I'm still stuck with a child. Mm -hmm. So that's how I see it. But neither one is right or wrong because if I'm saying I'm not ready to be a mom and you like, but this is still my child. We should have thought about that and had those conversations before we decided to lay down and what they call bump uglies. That part, that part. I think we, um, that's a, that's a, that's a thing that I think we're missing. We always look at the end result and then try to think back to who was wrong or right. But we're not having, we're we're not even talking about having the conversations beforehand. beforehand. Like at the end of the day, unless, I mean, even as, even as a teenager, you know what I'm saying? Like we need to be having more important conversations. Like you do understand that having unprotected sex, like, and you shouldn't have to remind an adult that having unprotected sex can lead to a child. And in that case, what then happens? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Do I, do I, even, okay, I might be fucking on you, but do I really want to be connected to you for the rest of my life? We get caught up in the sex being so good. And I'm not talking about we as women, I'm talking about we as just people, period, that all logic start to leave. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like yeah I might be fucking you temporarily because I need this high for this moment but what if something like you know what I'm saying like we now we get to the point where it's like shit now I have to make a decision that's either gonna affect my body affect my spirit affect me emotionally affect me financially or literally change my whole fucking life Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy because so many women are looked at as being, I don't know, some type of way if they decide to choose to be um, sustained from sex. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. you withhold it from me. And it's kind of like, well, all I'm doing is giving. What's the, the investment in this sexual encounter? And what's the investment in, okay, I'm going to open up my legs, but then what am I getting in return? Am I getting a husband? Am I getting a family? Because you might only want the expectation of the making of, but then what happens when I do become pregnant? What happens when I decide that I, you know what I'm saying, want to keep my baby and else comes from it? I'm sorry, it was breaking up a little bit, so I didn't... Am I breaking up? <laughs> huh? No. no. That's time. In the, no, in the comments, I posted the thread from the conversation that happened on my timeline when I posted that picture, and when I tell you, you can see the divide in, in the visual. Like, there was a lot of women who was like, well, you should have thought about that before you laid down with her since you don't want to be responsible. But the whole thing was where a lot of the guys were trying to get Mm -hmm. some insight was, well, why is it okay when she opted to go get the abortion herself? Didn't need any input from him. But when he makes the same decision, even though it's selfish on both sides of the court, it's the well you still gotta suffer because like i just feel like that's that's immature on but everybody's mindset you know what i'm saying why is it okay well he was wrong because he feels some type of way both of y'all laid down there unless she was forced to have sex or he was forced to have sex they both made that decision together regardless regardless so my question is this and i'm gonna ask both of you ladies uh you being a mother and you don't have kids at all if you guys have the conversation where kids is not in either one of you guys' future, 
Like, you know, Tyler's older, so you probably don't want no more kids now. And Z, you making moves and a kid will just throw everything off. But you have a partner and y'all do these things and an accident happens. And he suggests, hey, neither one of us need a kid. Let's look into this abortion option. You've now changed your mind and said, nah, fam, I don't believe in abortion. Should he have to be responsible for taking care of the kid, especially when you guys had the conversation of how kids are not a good thing for y'all right now? On top of, he even made the suggestion and gave the money towards getting the abortion, but you chose to still have it. Should he still be financially responsible? So... Okay, you want to go ahead. You go first. Whew. I know it, 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 it's it's a it's a tough one. It's it's not it's not tough at all because it's not I, tough at I, all. I was in that situation. I said I never wanted to have children. I got in a situation with a grown ass man who is what maybe four or five years my senior, and we I was dead set on I don't want any children. Right. He was like, "Well, shit, I already got kids, but." I probably shouldn't have any more. Right. So it was kind of like, okay, whatever. I was a virgin. He wasn't. Ooh. It was a conversation, but it was kind of a, oh, okay, well, she don't want no kids, so it is what it is. Right. And in the midst of us breaking up, I found out two months later I was pregnant. That's usually how it happens. And it was, okay, well, let's go get it taken care of. In that moment of, what the moment I found out I was pregnant, everything changed it was right. how do i say i believe in god and i believe in everything that he has you know what i'm saying the divine everything for me how do i say that i'm in control of this situation and i need to kill my child which is why i so did, that's why i went with the does he have because the you, conversation that i had with my son's father was in that moment that day i found out a lot i found out that he was also married oh so it was well i'm telling you but it's, it's my responsibility to tell him that, okay, now we have a child on the way. Right. If he chose that very day, all right, fuck it, I'm not doing this, then fuck it, I'm not doing this. Right. I'm doing this. In that moment, I have to understand that he, we had the conversation. Right. He didn't want to do it. I decided to keep on going along with the pregnancy. Right. If this man still today, my son is 13 years old, decide to say, well, I don't want to be a dad no more. Okay, cool. All right. But here's the reason why I bring that up. Because even though you guys can have Wait a minute. Agreement, you can let me let me put my input in. Go right ahead. <laughs> As somebody who don't have kids. Okay. So <clears throat> you said something that really kind of stuck out because we had had a conversation prior. Um, and said that neither one of us wanted to have kids. Right. I'm going to assume that because we've had a conversation that we're mature adults and we understand that circumstances are never going to be exactly how we plan them. So in the event that I want to keep the child because I've changed my mind for whatever reason, maybe... Maybe I'm making how much, however much money I want to make or, you know what I'm saying, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not saying that you're financially responsible. Right. However, like I would, I would, I want, what I want is for us to get to a point where we not fucking with people who are, and I don't even want to call them immature because you did make it very, very plain that you wanted kids or that you did not want kids. Right. I just think we need to keep keep it in our minds that shit change shit change um <laughs> Bro, oh, what it was, was that you said was i don't I, where you tell them oh i don't believe in abortion well we should have been had that part of the conversation how about we, we should just fucking roll condoms no, well you you that could part, like that. you can be mature in yeah, one way and you're mature in another way you know what i'm saying like Okay, we don't want to have kids, so, so we're not going to have unprotected sex. 
if you We're don't want to have we can go get a vasectomy. Get in, exactly. Get snipped in. Like, I'm going to be on birth control. Like, you know what I'm saying? If now, if, if we get pregnant. But then, see, that's even another debate. It's kind of like, well, if we both decide we don't want to have kids, who gets the surgery? Who gets the procedure? If condoms is not, or birth control isn't, you know what I'm saying? The right. thing to do, or, oh, but there's a percentage that things can go wrong. Who gets the procedure? And that's the, listen, yeah, and that's, hate, that's another part of the conversation. Right. And I hate to say this. It's easier for the woman to get on birth control because. Didn't for a man to put on a condom? No, no, no. Oh. I'm just saying, okay. you know, let's, let's just factor the condom out completely. Let's say you personally have an allergic reaction to condoms, which is why condoms is not an option. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. That's the only excuse that I can come up with where a condom should not be coming out the pocket, throwing on the table since we don't want to have kids. Okay? It would be easier for y'all to get on birth control because y'all can do things like the pill or the shot or whatnot that we do have hey, to get first, No, birth. pause. Pause, pause, pause. That's chemically changing some shit. Have you ever gonna... been on birth control? No, because... Okay. Listen. What, no. <laughs> listen. That's a discussion that needs to be had between those two people and that is the point that I, I want us to make today. It is an individual, it's not no one size fits all solution. Well, I don't want kids, so if you got to okay. control. Huh? What? I, I didn't say that. But no, but that's that's general. That's the general, general, that's the general I don't want to have kids, it. so you need to be on birth control. Exactly. Uh, that's just because no. you don't want to have kids don't mean that Jerome that I'm going to be fucking tomorrow don't want to. I'm just having, like, I'm just trying to push the conversation forward. No, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. that that's what always happens, though. Uh, it always a, happens that, oh, the woman should just do it because it's easier. Okay, well, guess what? Birth control is only effective maybe like 80 to 90 percent of the time. So <laughs> what if I still and get pregnant? women don't believe in contraception. So they really don't. It's a lot of women who don't. Like if if you are a man adamant about not having kids, go get that little thing snipped. I'm then you ain't got you you ain't got to worry about it at I'm not against it. You're t- you're taking control of that. your own destiny. Can we get a gym? No. You just not gonna push the buttons today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You act, you got one job. <laughs> My God wants to show up. And I okay, so up. let's just say we did all that. Okay. And God basically just put it in y'all life like, look, you're going to carry the second coming of Christ regardless of what you do. You can snip and tip and duck and burn and turn and pop and do all these things. That's how you get pregnant. <laughs> that was <laughs> I was so cranky. But you, you, do, uh, you, you do all the precautions. You do everything that you're supposed to do. There's there's not even the no only hidden thing agenda. that you're supposed to do to uh, not have children is not have sex. In this hypersexual world, but that's the problem, though. That's what we're saying. It's not about I, the end I, result today. Like, I mean, we get to that point, but what we're saying is we need to bring it all the way back to the conversations that need to be had before we get ourselves into these scenarios. It's not. I don't like. Because everybody is debating about whether he's right or she's right in whatever situation. Mm -hmm. We're trying to bring it back to before all of that happened, what should what should be done? I think that we so quick to want want to feel, quote unquote, complete or want to feel connected with somebody that we jump into so many situations prematurely as far as whether it's friendship, relationships, whatever the case may be. So it's like, okay, well, I just want somebody to consistently have sex with. So now I'm in a relationship with somebody who I don't know, who I don't know oh. about any of their beliefs. And you know what I'm saying? We don't know anything about these people that we are quote unquote that is. dating. We're skipping so many steps, which means we're skipping so many emotions. We're skipping so many conversations that we are not getting to the point where when we get in the relationship that we understand how do you, do you want children? How do you like your breakfast? Do you want the bed made up before you leave for fucking work? Do you like to take your showers or your baths at night? Like, 
these are the conversations that we're not having because if you already have children and I don't have any and I'm coming into a situation where you have children, how am I supposed to behave as a quote unquote stepmother? Hmm. How are you supposed to behave as a quote unquote stepdad? Are we a blended family? Are your kids, your kids, my kids, my kids? What happens if we have one together? What happens when your kids come to visit? Like we don't have these conversations. Because people don't look at those situations. Pause. Give your motherfucking self a round of applause. She don't want to push the button. Push the button. Push the motherfucking button. Because that's what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, we, you hit the nail so hard on the motherfucking head like we so quick to make the situation look like you know what I'm saying what we think it's supposed to look like but we did not build the foundation like nigga you built the motherfucking house meant for fucking Wisconsin and you built that shit in Hawaii that motherfucker about to sink because it don't even like it doesn't do well in lava and sand and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't fucking work. It's not gonna stand up to a hurricane. You feel me? Like, it doesn't, like, it don't make sense. We don't get to that point where we having the, imp- like, real important conversations. And I always, like, like we, or or you get in a relationship and you find out that this motherfucker is a triangle. And you a motherfucking circle. I mean, a lot of the problems come from like Ruthie said, where we don't we don't do our research. Like, we need to get to the point where sex doesn't need to be such a top priority. Um, Cause I know there's been situations where I met a person, talked to them for seven days and we didn't already have sex. Now we're complicated. Like now one person has caught feelings because during that seven days, they were really building towards something. They were really trying to get to know this person and grow the situation. And the other person was only looking for somebody to masturbate with in so many words in other people's defense not mine but in other people's i will say that in genesis you know adam (laughs) was you know laying there asleep in verse 18 and then in verse 24 eve was created and she was considered a wife before we even knew who her name was so it only took from verse 18 to verse 24 25 for them to be considered husband and wife that's i a, mean that's a condensed book i'm they, just wait, they wait, wait, wait. They wait, wait. wasn't the whole story I'm just, <laughs> that was a summary i'm just listen, that was a listening to god I'm just saying, but in their defense, some people, I mean, I've met a lot of guys and they be like, oh, well, I know within so much time if you're the wife or not. True. You can. You know don't know within so much time if I'm a but fucking kill you or not either. But taking consideration, there's a difference of people who are dating and people who are dating with a purpose. You see what I'm saying? Some people go into, they see the potential in that person. So they want to date with purpose with this person because the end goal is to get to a relationship. And then the end goal to them is to get a life partner. Okay. I feel other people are dating in the moment to either a get over a past situation to not be bored or because they don't know how to live alone. Or they just want to have fun. And both of them is okay. The thing about it is when we have that conversation, we know I can't date. Like if I'm dating with intent, then I should not be dating somebody who's dating for fun. Exactly. So if someone's dating for fun, come holla at me when you ready to date with purpose and hope that I have Or space don't come back you. and holler at me at all. Right. Until you leave me alone. A motherfucker would. Just so you know. I wish a motherfucker would waste your time again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. we had this conversation, what was it, last summer um, with Tyson them, and he was saying how any two people can make it if they have the same end goal and if they're willing to put in the work. Right. Not, I can't be doing all the fucking work. Everybody doesn't have the same end goal because but that's why a lot the of conversations people, need to be had. And you right. can't just have conversations because a motherfucker that just want to have fun is going to be like, oh, well, yeah, me too. Well, ex- explain. Okay. Let me ask both of you ladies a question. Do you feel like most of the people in this world don't know what the true definition of love is? I don't no, know. I don't feel like that. I don't feel like that because it ain't no true definition of love. What's love to me is not what's love to Ruthia is not what's love to Tone. So do you feel like that that also could play a factor in how people move when it comes to being in relationships? But that's something that needs to be 
like I, when I first meet somebody or date somebody, I lay the shit out and I let people know, yes, I'm a spoil brat. Yes, this is what I want. This is what I'm expecting. And if you can't give me that, then I'm not going to want to move forward and dating you. But that's me expressing what I want, what I need and what I'm expecting from you. If you telling me, okay, well, that's cool. I can do all that. And then you telling me that this is what you want, what you expect. Those are the conversations that people are so afraid to have day one, day two. I, I say that shit playing out like, yes, I'm spoiled, but I'm not spoiled in the way that you think I'm spoiled. I need the time. I need the attention. I need this. I need that. And some people be like, well, I mean, I can do that, but I work these hours. So it might be, a, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. But right. we, what I'm thinking or how I express love and how I receive love is different. And that's the same way for Ziza and somebody else. So those, that needs to be said. If you don't know how to receive love, you be like, well, I think she trying, but that's not the way I receive it. Then say that shit. Stop bringing me fucking ho-hos. I like Twinkies, goddammit. You know what, Ruthia? <laughs> this is like the most open that you have ever been. I, I ain't saying I really like Twinkies. I'm just... <laughs> no, 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 just not the Twinkie part. I don't even care about Just in general, like you really showing... Your softer side to that. I ain't soft. I'm a motherfucking G. Nigga, stop I never yourself. let a bitch little bow wow me. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, y'all gonna eventually put some respect on his name somewhere. Not here, Something's though, wrong with you. <laughs> but, um, so, okay. What up? The, the, okay, let's move into like, because I want to, I want, I want to talk about these conversations. Like we keep saying we need to have the conversation, but I think we need to talk about what the conversation is. You know what I'm saying? Like just how a lot of us had to find out about sex from our friends and TV and shit. I learned it from you. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, I'm still learning shit. Listen, a pause. Detour. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me inject right here. I have reached a different level of sexual satisfaction by my fucking self see that rose changes lives Listen, twice nice <laughs> Listen. and the thing about it is is the more i get to know myself the more that i can either teach somebody about me and this is in everything not just sexual but i can teach them more about me or i can let them know like you don't fit into what i'm trying to do we don't I, work I, together like, like this. You're you know what like, else is, you know I, what else is coming out. Um, as you start to find out more about yourself, not only like you said, not only on the sexual level, but just overall, you find out that there's people in your lives that you don't really need in your life anymore. Like a lot of people right now will ooh. will bed hop with people, for an example, because they feel they need that feeling you get from that. But as they start to discover themselves more and more That's now, an it's like, I don't need you. The way I love myself is greater than the way you love me. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not replacing you. Come on. But your necessity is not as much as it was before. Like, you're less likely to deal with a fuck boy because you don't really need to fuck him. Mm. So, now, so now you find out you've just been dealing with a boy all this time and you want a man. So now you tend to start weighing people out of your lives because you've already found self love within yourself. I don't want to give him no damn <laughs> or no gems. Like hi to. He fucking snapped though. He did snap. <laughs> I give him that one. You just you you give me my hours before I go, fam. That's all I ask I you to do. I thought a cheesecake. Come back. She loves me now. Um. So the co- the conversation, right? Let, if we break it down to the absolute basics, right? Communication. Right. Communication is a multifaceted system. You Jeez. can write. You can sing. You can speak. You can do fucking sign language and or body language. Body language is a thing. Damn. You need to find... You need to find the way that works for you. I'm sorry. It, it, it be, it, it's The video kind of be fucking up, so I don't be hearing y'all if I'm talking. Um. Okay. Stop. Um, but you need, like, we all need to find the way 
that works for us to communicate because you have to be able to advocate for yourself in any situation, in a relationship, in a friendship, in familial relationships. Like you have to be able to advocate for yourself in a way that makes you feel like you got your point across. Mm -hmm. Like, it's certain, like for me, right? I can talk all fucking day. But for a long time, it was hard for me to advocate for myself when it came to confrontation. You know what I'm saying? If I felt like what I had to say to somebody was going to cause tension or it was just, even if it was just uncomfortable, I just withheld. You know what I'm saying? Until it got to a point where now I'm shaking up this bottle and the pop top, you know, or the top pop. And now we in a full blown fucking argument because you put peas in the motherfucking macaroni and cheese. You know, like, That's and disgusting. it just, it didn't have to get there. Hey, <laughs> you you, you want to know something else, like, yeah, you you know what else in in the world of com- communication, uh, there's one thing that we have to stop doing in order for us to be able to move forward. Every conversation doesn't have to be who hurt who. You know, um, the other day I was watching this movie on Netflix. I know people have been talking about it. Um, I actually watched it a couple of more times because I really want to get to the root of it. It's the uh, Malcolm and Maria movie starring uh, Zendaya and baby Denzel, as I refer to him as. Um, I seen it. Yeah, check it out. It's a very toxic, triggering, triggering movie because the whole movie is one long ass overnight argument. And I mean, Queen and Slip was one long ass first date. It was terrible ass first day when you think about it but it was a long first day so it was just one long ass argument and the crazy I've part about that. it is, yeah we all have and the Not crazy me. part about it is is the argument all started based off of knowing my value and knowing my worth that that is the premise of how this argument started okay without giving the movie away and the whole movie was all about instead of acknowledging crediting and listening to what the other person said they spent the other they spent the whole movie tearing the other person down who can tear down the other person even worse only for them to eventually accept what was said after they got tore down Mm -hmm. but then go back to something else as a rebuttal to hurt that person just as much as you just hurt me that just take that right and i didn't watch the movie because everybody was like oh it's so triggering blah 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 and i've lived that i've had that overnight argument and ended up having to go get motherfucking pancakes in the morning because the nigga just had to get out the house so i'm just saying (laughs) breakfast was lit don't do that (laughs) (laughs) but take that on a macro level right take it out of a relationship and just make it men versus women period we can't even get to the root cause of the issue and we can't get to the healing because everybody's stuck in the right. middle right you say everybody what everybody want to be right exactly everybody want to be right and everybody trying to fix everybody trying to point the finger who hurt who most like um not like this and this is so menial but i love this example when people put on Facebook or something and it'd be like something cute, some cute that somebody done did for somebody else. And they'd be like, Oh, how many women even appreciate this? Mm -hmm. Two things, sir. You're not even about to do that. You're not, you're, you're this not, this is not even something that you're going to do. So shut the fuck up. Yeah. Unless you about to take your girl out on that date. And then y'all two, just a real date. Y'all consider it a real date. If we say yes, you still not gonna do the shit. 
And we know, like, and we, the thing about it is, we, we know it from, each other all the time. So <laughs> we know it from experience because you, are what you doing me? I want to take you out and then ask me what I want to do, sir. You not taking me out then? You just funding my 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 shenanigans. Right my venture you ain't putting in no effort and no thought yeah, you know what i'm saying what i like to do in the beginning right. and you know oh, okay well what you like to eat don't ask me what i like to do or what i like to eat and then take me to do the fucking opposite that's because people are not right. doing the legwork uh, anymore in regards to getting to know a person and finding the person out like yes we are sick and tired of those well what do you like to eat what's your favorite color where's it that's actually the groundwork of how you find out the basic platforms for people. I don't mind people asking me what I like, but don't ask me what my, what my favorite color is. You're, I feel it's like, not like something that you learn going along so and no, noticing. No, that's not always true because your favorite color could be something like orange. But you can't wear orange all the time. You can't always have a bunch of orange. Nobody things. can ever come in my house and not say that they didn't know I didn't like elephants. Not, every, not everybody's been in your house. But that's what I'm saying. In, in those instances, can't nobody ever be like, oh, well, I didn't know you like elephants. Nigga, you've been to my house. You've been, you go to my house once. Okay, I, I, you gonna know. Okay, so what's up with all the goddamn elephants? Are there cameras in them? Like, that's something that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're gonna know. Don't ask me, well, well, what's, your, we, what's your favorite animal? So since we here, Nigga. so since we here, what, what's up with all the damn elephants? They're spies. This is why they get you. There's one for every relationship, for every person I've ever killed. So if Shut a guy, up. so if a Shut guy it. goes out, he was um, like, I see this cute little African stuffed elephant, and, and he buys it for you. Does that mean more to you? Than the person who goes and spends the three hundred dollars on a date to your favorite restaurant, stuff like that. Definitely the elephant. Okay, Definitely that's why I'm asking that elephant. question for, for legitimately. Mm-hmm. Or guess what? You could do no, both. It don't take. You three, stay out of this. It don't take three hundred dollars. <laughs> stay out of it. It doesn't take three hundred dollars to please me. Me and Zizi been on plenty dates, and we ain't never spent three hundred dollars. Okay, ever. first of all, first of all, don't compare y'all dates, because y'all dates no, will always. No, we have should though. Movies. We should because no. we've done Even the cheap though- dates that people say that oh, girls don't like that, they don't appreciate. We've done the getting dressed up, doing the hair, and makeup, and going out. We've done them all because it was a time where it was like we're dating ourselves. I'm doing what I want for me. We've done all of that already, so. It, it never took three hundred dollars. The most expensive day we went on fucking Houston, and that shit was lit. But that was an out of town type of trip when we buying bottles for fucking breakfast. But you can't. A man can't compare. You can't compare no, yes, a man can't. to a best yes, you friend. Can. Yes, you can. No. There's... Yes, you can, and that's exactly what you should be comparing yourself to. If you okay, look at me and we see a relationship, what? I said, I said, run it down. <laughs> If you look at me and Ruthie, a relationship, right? You look at all this. What, what we've gone and just got snacks and fucking watched uh, fucking Beyonce sitting by the lake. You can literally take that same date and replicate that shit. And guess what? You just scored a whole bunch of motherfucking points with Ruthia or myself. What, what can Anita say? Oh, he's trying to get topped off. <laughs> Period. Period. I'm giving you all the jewels <laughs> like, right now. That's that's the thing that like thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness. Do some shit that her best friend does for her. Do some shit that she do with her best friend. If you know that every motherfucking Saturday she go and get her eyebrows and nails and feet done. You said what? I said I tell that to people all the time. Like I want to date my best friend. And they be like, that's gay. No, in order for us to even coexist in a relationship, you have to be my best friend. I got to be able to unload with you. I got to be able to smile with you. Give, you know, I got to be able to do all of the shits with you. But okay, so let me okay. ask you something because both. Wait, of y'all... let me finish my point. Don't, don't stop <laughs> on me. Go ahead and get your shit on, girl. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. If this is this is how easy it is. Like this is how easy it is. If you know that. Every Saturday morning, I'm going to get my eyebrows, my feet, and my nails done. I ain't even saying that you got to pay for it. Come with me. 
Come on and get your feet done. Come on and get Please. you a, a, a manicure as well. Hey, I don't know if you want them dogs out in public, but okay. I've dated but somebody I'm like that. That's neither here. That's minor details. If you know I go to brunch every Sunday. And you won't you only you don't have to pay for my brunch and you don't even have to come. If you recommend a new brunch spot, oh, I know you and your girls go out every Sunday morning. That is a new brunch spot. If you ain't never been there, y'all should go check that out. Points. Okay, so fact. As much as you guys are saying some true gems, but let's take in consideration. Now you're invading best friend territory. No, you're not. No, no, hold on. No, let me run not. it down. Let me let, let me run it down. Now you're invading best friend territory. So as you like saying, you and the girls go out to brunch every Sunday. So if you decide to want to come to brunch with them that Sunday, they're going to be like, well, why is he here? No. Or if you start doing things like going to get the nails and the stuff done on Saturdays with you, even though that's a dope thing. And, you know, actually men need to go get manis and petties too. We need to normalize, you know, making yourself look good and feel good. That's at the same time. That's no. even your best friends thing. No, because no. Think about it. while I'm there with my female friends, we're discussing our the guys that we're interested in, the guys that we we discussing all of these things, and we want a male's input. So we probably already said like, oh, we should pick a Saturday where we can all bring a guy that we're interested in. Now, see, that's different. You guys pick the Saturday. But I can't just randomly it. come one day. Can I say I'm, something? I'm just, can I say course, something? Your show. I'm the one who needs to show. I didn't say, listen, there is nothing more that I want for my best friend than for her to deal with a motherfucker that make her happy as a bitch. Now, that's, that's period. No, so, here's the thing. So, wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, uh, we ain't gonna even say their names, but we know who we talking about. Exactly. Them motherfuckers became instantly friends with each of us. One even mm -hmm. our niggas, they were still in the, you know what I'm saying, in in the getting to know you phase. But he he talked to me just like he talked to you. I got two girlfriends. Exactly, you, and he nigga. talked to you just like he talked to me. Ain't invaded shit. But that's because you two have an understanding. Not no, every, no, 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 different. We're no, no different. Not everybody, not everybody and their best friend is the same way. Because well, I, they not true. So I, I you know, all of these qualifiers on there. But all I'm saying is, it's very, very simple. You don't have to put no extra syrup, no strawberries, no whipped cream on top of it. It's really, really very simple. Like I'm you said, you don't have to invade my best friend time. I ain't, I didn't say you was showing up to brunch. I said you called me and told me a restaurant that me and my girls could go to on Sunday morning for brunch. I'm gonna catch you at dinner though, boo. So don't don't eat lunch because we gonna have a real nice dinner. We gonna have a lot of food for dinner, or we gonna have an early dinner. Patrice made it really really clean when she on um, one of her um, events that we went to. She was saying intimacy for a woman starts when she wakes up. We might not do nothing until 11.30 at night, but you have to be having those, the foreplay and the intimacy with me all day. All day, that shit works. So the waking up in the morning time or uh, make sure y'all check out this restaurant or don't do this because I want to make sure this is done at the end of the day. That works for us. And ain't no way that Z gonna be able to call me and be like, oh, I can't make it to this today because such and such want to do something. Oh shit, I planned on being lazy today anyway. Oh, okay, let me clean up my house. Have your fun. Call me later. A true friend is not going to do anything but be like, I see you, boo. If a bitch is Period. hating on you, she ain't your real friend. She ain't your friend. Get rid of her. Period. Period. <laughs> no, but them usually be the friends that because y'all have known each other for a long time, it's the reason why you still call her a friend. And people need to understand just because I've known you since insert year here doesn't mean we have the same intentions. But that's a whole nother conversation. Listen, that definitely is. That's Back to my vibe, filtered. Those friends, like I will filter those quote unquote associates out my life. Okay. And they like, should be. It ain't. Mm -hmm. I can pick up with any any one of my friends, and it's just like I've never, you know, what I'm saying, missed a beat. Right. Everybody As you know, I'm very territorial, so 
Yes, you are. The fuck? Very. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this conversation, right? Back to back to the conversation that needs to be had, or an, uh, like another thing. Um, okay. And I, I unfriended somebody. I, uh, you, you know what? Be- Never mind. I'm not even finna go there. Let me reverse because that's gonna make me mad, and then we gonna be on something else. Yeah, we're um, tri- a nut, like a nut. Okay, so we got the thing where guys be like this, this, and that. Or I saw something today that was like, um, and it was a woman. She wrote this. She said, "Ladies." Um, these men being raised by their mama so they can cook, they can clean they can do all of this and that for themselves and they can financially take care of themselves so what are you bringing to the table besides vagina right Ooh, I, and we can I, say we could take I, all of that and switch it around and be like women are doing everything that they need for themselves including taking care of themselves financially so what are you bringing to what, what are you bringing to the table besides some dick right I want us to and 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 I might, you know, y'all might think I'm crazy. I want us to stop having that conversation. Oh no, I agree with you. I always, you know what? I agree to that conversation and I even advocate on the side of the women with that conversation because I get sick and tired of when they ask a man what you want in a woman. And it's always seemed like some motherly slave kind of request. Some cooking, some cleaning, taking care of the house. Like my nigga, if you are a grown as adult. How are you not able to cook, clean, and take care of your own home yourself? I don't think that they don't that know you, how, though. No, no, I'm not saying they don't, but why are you making something that's basic living requirements a must-have in a woman? I get that you don't want a lazy bum bitch. I get that, okay? You can usually know what they are before you even get in that conversation anyway, so you can avoid that situation. You're not talking to these women when you're talking about what you want in a mate. You're looking for someone that's established. You need to change what your parameters of what you want in a woman is outside of basic needs and necessities. That's what true. does she bring to you mentally? What does she bring t- to the table financially? Is she trying to help grow wealth or use your wealth? Because I could care less about a person who wants me to buy everything. No, no, no. no. If I will buy you shit if you're figuring out a way how we make more money. So, you know, even still with that being their basic response, are we asking the question of why? Because I've had, I've some, I don't even remember what the conversation was, but that came up like, oh, well, I expect the woman to do X, Y, and Z. Just like, I'm not going to say it, but I expect your ass to get up and take out the fucking garbage to clean out the car, to shovel the snow. But when I asked the question, like, okay, so what's your thinking behind it? His only response was, I'm, I, I was raised in a two-parent household. This is the traditions that I've... These are the only traditions that I've only known. A man does this. This is not what I'm expecting you to do. But in how I was raised, men do this, women do that. But, and no, it wasn't a point of, oh, well, I can't do it, so you got to do it for me. But or, did you notice how you had the conversation for clarity? Oh, I definitely these, asked. These the people fuck are, you mean? <laughs> these, these people are not having that for clarity. You know what's happening but when he they says... They need to. But here, this is, this is what's happening. When you say, well, I want a woman that cooks and cleans and do this, instead of the woman asking, well, why are these necessities? Their response is, well, are you going to fix houses and work on cars and oh, do all God. this? Like, that's not getting to... That's not getting to an understanding. I don't want a man that can fix my car because... I don't trust that he he ain't gonna you know break it a little bit more. Look, as long as he got an Uncle Leroy that <laughs> change your brakes for a case of beer, you good. I, I like to go Listen, to the this. This my thing about that conversation, right? Because again, we take this cookie cutter, and we think every relationship has to be like that. Big facts. If you can cook better, stupid. Than me, you can cook better than me. And that's just that on that. We get so caught up in what can you bring to me and what can I bring to you versus what can we accomplish together? And I don't even mean like, oh, we have to go out and build an empire because if you good at your job and I'm good at mine and we both happy, then that's our legacy. You know what I'm saying? Or or that's, that's our empire. We good. We get so caught up in I got to get mine that we don't even understand that a whole the, the the point of a relationship is a partnership. So whether it's babe, I make 
I make enough money so that you don't have to do nothing. Latina. So in, in, in me trying to balance out this relationship, I'm going to take care of home. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to support you. And, 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 and if that's if that's your agreement, then that's your agreement. Now, I didn't even attach gender to that shit. You know what I'm saying? So if I make enough money as a woman, if I'm making a million dollars a year, why the fuck do I want my nigga to work? I ain't gonna even lie. Like, and I'm not saying no lie. Because okay. you know, listen, a motherfucker be quick to call me a pick me and that's the last thing I am on earth. But you don't do the if, pick me. I'm, if I'm good as a bitch and I'm making a million a year and you very supportive and you know what I'm saying, you got my back on a regular fucking basis, Nigga, what we finna do? Because you make me, first off, you make me happy in a completely different fucking way. Mm. I don't need you financially. So obviously you're cool. here for so many other fucking reasons that, what the, <laughs> like what another, what, what is another $100,000 gonna do? Like mm. you wasting our time, especially if you have to go to work for it. Now, unless it makes you absolutely fucking happy, to do that hundred thousand dollar, five hundred thousand dollar, whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh well, whatever. But we get so caught up in because you know why? You know why? Because we all broke. Yep. <laughs> That's why we get That's caught up in what can we bring to the table when motherfuckers is really should we we should really be out here trying to build mansions. Y'all stay sitting at the table. Y'all stay Come sitting on. at the table. Like, and like, and again, it go back to the pointing fingers who hurt who the most. Like, because then it comes to the one part about, like, oh, well, it was my table, you just came and brought a fucking chair. I swear to God, if you stop saying, exactly. if you stop saying you the table, like, I, I am the fucking table, bitch. You still so you're wood? You still ain't answered the question, though. <laughs> Like, I don't give a damn if you... I got a table, too. Answer the question. <laughs> you know, it's think, tables in the park with a bunch of bird shit on it, too. A whole fact. bunch of them. So, what... Get a, I mean, table. You get a plastic table. That's it. It's a fold-up <laughs> table. It? It's definitely a fold-up <laughs> table in this world, okay? Listen. Stop the table, fam. You're still not answering Listen. the question. So... Know your work. People. It was a... Um, I, don't, I don't even want to say it was a trending topic, but the vow and Kadeem the whole conversation with them about him feeling like she forced him into monogamy and mm-hmm. marriage and all this other stuff. And she was like, no, I was just stating what I wanted, what I needed out of you. And not even just out of him. She was saying we're dating and I've evolved and I've grown and all of that. I feel like that was the miscommunication of what men think, what well, what women say and what men hear or what men say and what women hear. She was saying, I'm setting the fucking standards. So this is what I want, I expect. And if you can't give me that, then e- either you need to step up and give it to me or we need to dissolve what we have going on. Because I could be like, well, I don't like eating this, but then I've tried it. So now I've grown and I've elevated to say, oh, this isn't so bad. I do want that. Also, I ain't believe in God or back to the first thing we talked about. I didn't want kids, but now I fucking do. She didn't say that you had to do that. She said that this is what I've evolved. And I said, I want it. I've learned more about who I am. And this is what I want. He said, well, you forced me into monogamy. No, the fuck I did not. um, I said, I made it a cheat. That's just like me um, saying I don't want to be punched in the fucking face. I didn't say you couldn't hit women. I just said don't fucking try me. Listen, uh-huh. this this the thing because that that happened to me before in a relationship. I'm sorry. And it was that. it was simply because I was fucking with a nigga. I was fucking with a nigga who I you know I felt our communication in the beginning was down. good, but I didn't know what I wanted and I didn't know my worth at the time. But then something clicked and it's like, fam, we've been dealing with each other for a year. We given each other all of the relationship privileges with none of the, I don't know. It just, I, I didn't want, I didn't want what we had going on to continue. So I gave him an option. 
I said, "You forcing me, cuz?" <laughs> no, literally. For the rest of our relationship, he told me I forced him into the relationship, and I simply I said, "Listen, we can, we can either be together, or we can stop fucking and be friends." Now. A mature, logical thinking adult would have understood that that was either a way out or the way in. Not a force, but maybe what what was it that you didn't want to stop fucking me? Or you was good with where you was at? And Come then any time I, anytime I then decided like, okay, well, this is, you know what I'm saying? Now these standards, you know, or whatever the situation may have been, then it was like I gave you your way out. You chose to stay. And that was it. I didn't force you. I gave I I let you know that this was where the crossroad began. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk down this path. Listen, and as you whether it's come down man, this or path or we go the other way. As we, as a man or a woman, when we set that standard, we have to stand on that fucking standard. We can't say, okay, well, this is what I want. Now, okay, well then let's just see where it goes and then we con we constantly are just allowing that shit to, the boat to just sail like okay we just gonna see where it goes but in my mind i already made up that i wanted to be here by this time but you said let's see where it goes so in my mind okay well we're heading north this way but you like no bitch we just still fucking and, and being friends here you got fucking standards we just flown. You were, like motherfucker you ain't even turned your engine on and i'm full steamship ahead like Come on. We on the same motherfucking ocean in two different fucking vessels. You got me fucked up. So I like <laughs> and mind you at the time we was young, but I promised listen, I made a I made a promise to myself that no motherfucker would ever be able to tell me that I forced them into a relationship again. When you don't provide me with what I need, I'ma move around. You don't get the choice no more because I'm gonna control my own shit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I made it very, very clear that I need <laughs> TUV, and you keep tr you keep trying to provide XYZ. Oh. Nigga, I said TUV. <laughs> Tom was like, "Wait, what?" Hey, that's not how you say TDR. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just I I want us to get out of the mindset of what we hear and how we receive it. It's just that fucking simple. Yes, that's why we need to stop having serious conversations via text. Listen, you, we need to start having more having, face to face or I face have time. all of the conversations. No, because misinterpretations during text can ruin and, a lot but of situations. Some people don't understand it face to face but that's the point of asking that's just like a child in the classroom not knowing what the fuck is going on but refusing to raise their hand to ask everybody in this motherfucker confused but nobody's willing to ask the fucking question of, wait can you can you break that down for me because I don't get it Exactly. So now, we're all failing in relationships because nobody is willing to ask the fucking questions get Nick I'll ask, look, what do you mean? I'm by asking. This? Like, fam, hold I'm on. I'm asking. Especially since. <laughs> you know, fucking over there. I'm going to send her a button. To, I'm going to send her her own button. I'm, I'm asking all of the questions because y'all know my facial expressions are, ooh, shit. I be, the, wait, what? Mm -mm. But that's also Run that why, back and explain but that's that. also why conversations face to face need to be had more often. Like, we need to actually get back to talking. To each other more because society has became so damn awkward that we won't have some of the most meaningful conversations in person anymore like there'll be whole relationships that they text the whole day it's all text all inbox all dms never Listen, once said anything to each other i've, I've gotten Listen. out of my way of saying making the excuse that i can only have a weekend boyfriend because i work third shift and i'm a parent and stuff like that because I've tried to date somebody who was a third shifter and was a parent and was like, oh, okay, we can only really see each other on the weekend. But then I randomly meet somebody new and it's like, wait, so you work what hours and you are what? 
during the week, but we still make time. So exactly. I've gotten out of my way of being like, oh, okay, I can't see you until this time, but I got an hour before work and I got an hour before I got to pick up son. And we use that time to sit and talk face to face. As you should. And listen. And exactly. you valued that relationship a lot more than the one who met your schedule but didn't meet your needs. I don't listen, even like it. Thing. I got Y'all, because you don't know Tony is supposed to be Antonio. Antonio is a very <laughs> smart person. Tony, right. man. Okay. That's the only person I know. You never want to learn Antonio. That's why. It's okay. It's okay. We here now. We have and no I, choice. Is, uh, okay. Um, Hi, ZZ. You okay over there? Yeah, no, I'm great. Because we talking, and he over there, and he not on the camera. (laughs) I think we, I think, I think we starting to chip away. I think, I think this conversation, um, hopefully, it gets through to some people. Um, we should. I'm gonna invite somebody to to give their input, and but their face can't be shown because I don't need y'all in my business. Oh, (laughs) okay. Um. But I yeah, you. I know it's it's getting time for us or time for the next podcast. So we're gonna start wrapping up the show. Uh we definitely we got to have a part two or however many parts we need to have to make this shit. <laughs> no, this needs to be a series. This is a series that you guys will do until there ain't nothing left. Tell you about. ain't finna force none. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah. Let's move on to a little segment we like to call Don't Let This Fluffy Shit Fool You. Uh, Mine is kind of lighthearted. You want me to go first? Because you look like you just got stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, um, in light of quote, I, I, I'm not even going to call this woman Gorilla Glue Girl. Tessica Brown, right? <laughs> I'm gorilla glue she, today. And she fucked up. You know what I'm saying? She did a thing. But see, we we the focus ain't even on her. The focus ain't even on the people that's talking shit or supporting her. The focus is on this woman. And I just happened to write down her motherfucking name. Rhonda Y. McCoo of Illinois. This turkey-necked, pasty, stringy-haired, blind bitch (laughs) had the nerve to say she can understand why Tessica mistook the Gorilla Glue for hair glue because the gorilla on the Gorilla Glue bottle looks like Michelle Obama. <laughs> hold up, wait, wait. Hold the fuck up. Record scratch. First of all, I mean, this is not even my fluffy shit, but I'm in on it now. First of all, you're not about to what? disrespect the greatest first lady known to man. You know what? What's her name again? Rhonda Y. McCoo. That's funny. I'm coming to see you, Rhonda it's Y. Funny, y. McCoo. Funny. Don't, 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 don't fuck, don't fuck with Michelle. I will whoop you so, like I'm George happen. Bush. Okay. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> you know that uh, you mm-hmm. it's the bar for me. The way, you know, it's stiff well. <laughs> so there was one that said, it's the audacity. Don't you come for me. Come on. Um, Listen. Tashara Parker did that too. <laughs> like, ma'am, you, you, you shit out the audacity to ever come for the iconic woman that is Michelle Obama. Come on. May I ask you what um, melon level this woman was? Do you have to? D- come on now. She called her the a caucas- gorilla. The caucasity. Okay, I, I called her pasty her. for a reason. <laughs> the caucasity. But see, you. now this is this is twofold because how I came across this was somebody shared it and they was like oh black people are too sensitive um it was just funny you should have laughed at it 
motherfuckers literally had to tell this old ass bitch like no it's not no we're not being too sensitive do you not understand the parallels that monkeys and gorillas have had to with black people at the hands of white people throughout fucking history this is not to you z but just huh it doesn't Man, sit your dumb ass down. You, you didn't push it hard enough. Period. Like, period. Like, so not only is this stupid ass woman talking shit about Michelle Obama, but you you trying to tell black people to calm down. And mind you, this was a black person trying to tell other black people to calm down because we too sensitive. But, you know, like, not understanding the whole context of black people being aligned with, with gorillas and shit throughout fucking history. Motherfuckers is still remaking King Kong multiple fucking times. You know what? I... As if that wasn't a fucking representation of a black man, you know, or you know, or black men trying to covet white women. You, you know what? Fuck that bitch. That's, that's, <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Don't don't fuck so, that fuck bitch. I'm done. You can go ahead and hit the button. Don't let this fluffy shit fool you. Nigga. <laughs> I feel like I should have left the nigga on it. Like, I feel like I should not have cut it out. What about you? You got one? I have several. Can I get one off several? real quick? Several? I'm going to no. let, because I'm, I'm going to let Ruthia get her whole shit off. Um, oh, God. All right, so I just want to go ahead and put this out there that people need to mind their own motherfucking black business. Um, every time you turn around, when somebody gets in the news and, and a situation happens, people want to um, put their opinions on it. Speaking, matter of fact, this comes from the Gorilla Glue Girl. Um, like you have this ignorant white bitch over here saying the words that they saying, but you know, our own people, we sat here and we, we dragged this girl repeatedly. We called her dumb, ignorant, illiterate. I just wanted to know where she had her eyelashes from and whatnot. So then after all this was done and she realized the error of her ways and she had to go through everything like the surgery and did the GoFundMe and all these people were coming out basically looking out for her like her GoFundMe was was lit uh a couple of people are like donating like a, a nice little wig collection to her and whatnot the doctor did the whole was like twelve thousand dollar surgery for her for free and the whole nine yards and because she made this mistake and now she's sitting here with this 20k bag that she got Everybody's like, oh, she she did that on purpose. She knew what she was doing. She was trying to finesse the game and the whole nine yard. Like, no, first of all, can I get one of them sit your dumb ass down, please? Man, sit your dumb ass down. Nobody is going to ignorantly do this just for a bag. There is so many other ways you can get a motherfucking bag other than putting Gorilla Glue on you instead of doing ignorant shit like this this girl made a mistake it was an honest mistake it was a dumb mistake but she made a mistake now she has to live with this mistake for the rest of her life and it was definitely not for no twenty thousand dollar bag people you are stupid you are dumb and i fucking hate you niggers yes i think it came out i think it came out that she run a daycare or she owned a daycare right so no Last thing on her mind. No, no, no. I'm just saying she getting a bag already. She yeah. owns it. Like, but why? Do, but why do people dig for stuff like that when it's kind of like, like okay, every- I got a fucking business now. You mad because I use some fucking gorilla glue right. in my hair? I like, mean, shout out to her because I'm gonna go buy some because I need to put some wallpaper back up. That's <laughs> <laughs> Listen, gorilla glue sales about to go up. That shit work. Well, yeah, the shower curtain rod. I mean, they wasn't strong enough to hold that big ass trying to do them fancy tricks. But people still really like, oh shit, I need a shower curtain from a bathroom. So then it's day, it, it, it moves. Even black the fact, people make shit fucking spin. You hear me? Right. 
I'm just saying. I just was mad at how like folks really thought that this was a scam. Like, yeah, man, she she probably planted. No, she didn't. She hey, probably wanted her to stay still like, because she got bad ass little kids pulling it. Like, dude, your like, stupid ass. Man, you 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 man. Fake, you too fake deep. You too fake deep to think that she would think. Mm, I'm gonna spray some gorilla glue on my hair, and then I'm gonna get people to go fund me so that like, who thought that? Who? I would I would have faked it if I was gonna do it, you know. But I wouldn't have did it for real if I was gonna try to get a bag. She she just really didn't know. She just really didn't know. Maybe she was high. I don't know. Or like listen, I, I read an article that that made a good point about black women in hair care and about how like it's not foreign for us to have to go any and everywhere else to try to find something to make our hair do do what it needs to do. How many Big food time. products, actual food products are we using to help with our hair? Motherfuckers is using real avocados, real honey, real olive oil. Like, motherfuckers, how, Nigga, berries, what's one of again. the best ways to get motherfucking the shine off of your synthetic wig? Baby powder. Take this bitch off as soon as I walk out the door, you feel me? But that's the thing. That's what is so crazy about black women they can change the game in a heartbeat. You Listen. take something off the shelf, we gonna find a better alternative and then turn around and figure out how to package and sell that shit. If that Gorilla Glue would have worked and that shit would have washed out of her right hand, Gorilla Glue would have sold the fuck out. Watch somebody figure out a way not only to be able to use Gorilla Glue, but how to use it safely so you can have those permanent setups. Yeah, watch. I mean, or, you know, or watch it ain't the doctor well when you fucking. I'm just saying. You said what? Gots to be don't stick as well when you fucking. I'm just saying, if that doctor, the doctor who got her shit out, if he figure out a way to quickly um product, his, you know, what I'm saying, bottle up his product, motherfuckers gonna start using Gorilla Glue. Somebody if using non- if, if you can find a way to get this shit out my hair in seven days after I put it in there. We will I buy. Bet it. We said. We said exactly, exactly, and that's what the oh, fuck the article said. Like, listen, if this shit had worked, out. if this shit had worked, and her scalp wasn't didn't end up, you know, if it was if it was non toxic or painful, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, motherfuckers would have been buying Gorilla Glue. So what? don't somebody make it seem like we ain't trying to. some crazy ass shit. No, somebody gonna figure out a way how to make a nice wig cap. That can be taken on and off Please while using a Gorilla enough. Glue. That way, it can stay nice to the roots. Game over. You know what? Because really, to got to be is not hair glue, is it? Ain't got to be like free spray for people who want to have spiky hair. It's, it's for the whites. Yes, it's for those. Exactly. Things. For the whites. And what black women do? Figure out like, oh, this shit's sticky and it'll keep my wig on. I got fine texture here. I didn't say fine. I said that thin white shit. Y'all always say I got white people here. I've never said that to you. Too much melon for yeah, you to have oops. white people here. You ready for the for the button, sir? Because they wait ahead. patiently. Don't let this fluffy shit fool you. Okay, so my fluffy shit goes to everybody. What? Including Aziza. What? I'm going to use her last, but she already know why um no i got a lot of no's this week and because i'm a brat i'm spoiled i wasn't really expecting them and i'm just learning that everybody got me fucked up my cousin got me fucked up because she didn't ask me to be at her wedding but i'm that means i get two pieces of cake and i might walk out when they say i do and then come back um and i don't rock with the rest of the family so fuck them too that's probably why she said no um And then as far as business go, I feel like Aziza had me fucked up because we had a conversation and I, I I was thrown off and I was like, oh, this hoe was on punishment. So yeah, everybody got me fucked up. So I hadn't really been talking to her. Girl, I, I, I need a I button. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> It's true. I just felt like we we had a conversation. I thought we was on the same page. And then somehow we went from page six to fucking 18. And I was like, the fuck? So, yeah. So we're going to have a conversation after because instead of... <laughs> instead I filtered you for a couple days. 
What? I filtered you. Don't let this fluffy shit fool you. Okay, Anywho, so moving did, on to the next thing. Didn't segment. we just have this whole episode about communication? And I intended on giving her my fluffy shit, and I did. Anyways, moving on to the Anywho, next thing. Anywho, we uh, are moving on to she our keeping a kid. We moving on to our keeping a kid. Phrase. We moving on to our keeping it cute, which is a Ghanaian um, young man named Idris Sandu. Sandu. He is uh, the tech genius behind different apps like Uber and Snapchat. And he also, um, I think it was something like a, a, a mobile or a, a online retail mobile app or something like that. Um, of course, I can't do it because I can't get out of the stream to read the full article. So make sure you um, go over to our Facebook page, Pretty Plus Size and Powerful. Um, and while you're at it, follow us on all of the things, www.prettypluspower.com. Follow us on Instagram at Pretty Plus Power. Join the group, Pretty Plus Size and Powerful with group at the end. Yeah. It'll Who be posted on the I don't know why I was that. They said wow. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, we're gonna keep it moving. Um it's time for the I am statement. Go go to the mirror, say exactly what it is that you need to say to yourself to get you through the week. This week, my I am statement is I am unbreakable. Oh, that's dope. You know, I am been... not dealing with a Z's of shit, not just playing. Okay. And I'm out this motherfucker. <laughs> Wait, I didn't do it for real. I know you didn't. <laughs> I am setting the bar extremely high. As you should. Uh my I am statement is We don't give a fuck by y'all, let's play. <laughs> no, no, real talk. I am I am transforming because <laughs> where I was this time last year is gonna be so motherfucking different this time this year. Big facts. Well, who next, next podcast got- is it? Ruth or Fruit or Joey? It's Joey. Joey them in the building already. Tell me to come to the camera so I can say hey. <laughs> she is so <laughs> ratchet. So, so childish. <laughs> I'm, sick. I'm tired of her. <laughs> you gotta dip down, Joey. There, there you go. we go. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. God. I'm so sick of y'all. <laughs> Joey smell nice. All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Pretty Plus Size and Powerful Podcast. This has been episode 69. It might not be no motherfucking Aziz on the podcast next week. The way we're through just hit that motherfucking bomb. Bye. Whatever you do, sis, keep it cute, sis. Leave that beef and shit a roof, Chris, and the toothless. I've been official my whole life. I bought burners. I ain't buy lights. Huh?